Hello everyone. Second video I'm making today. I just finished the first one and um, what I'm doing is uh, this is part of a series. I think this is uh, the 12th in the series of um, what I call shelving vinyl records where I brought purchased over 700 albums last year at such a rapid rate I didn't have time to make videos so um, I have developed a system of putting them in the library to um, uh, record them on the Excel spreadsheet and then put them in their proper place in the library okay and as I do that I'm making these videos to show off uh, what I uh, purchased last year and uh, so we'll get started actually this first one I purchased yesterday at the uh, thrift store city USA and it's a I'll pull up the cover ah a very period 19 late 1950s uh, percussion percussion album uh, percussions at work Peter Rug Golo, I think is uh, how to pronounce his name, and Pete was involved with a, another project, another album I'm going to um, present in a moment. He produced it, but in the early 60s there was a label that was established called Command Records, and they pioneered the, the vinyl, the stereo sound on vinyl, and uh, created a whole big slew of series of albums of instrumental albums um, w w using the their experiments or uh, and you could just tell they're having fun and they 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 were geared toward the audio pine people who people who uh, are were into good high quality stereo equipment and recordings and vinyl pressing so the um, the this the sound of these albums are just amazing and I had um, a, a chance last year to buy a whole big stack of them that big all in great playable condition um, they pioneered the gatefold also so when you open it up you have information about the artists the pieces they're playing and plus a, uh, a explanation, the layout of the techniques used to record uh, in the stereo. So um, that's really cool. And it was mostly instrumental music from uh, musicians like Doc Severson of The Tonight Show and other um, players that are not household names but are well respected in music. Uh, you know, session players and such, and they just had fun creating all these weird instrumental um, music, space age cocktail bachelor pad. Uh, I call it bachelor pad music on steroids. Uh, so I'll do a video on on that one day. So uh, you know, all I needed was another percussion album because Command has a whole series of them, which I have, but. I could not resist this album cover that was on the uh, Mer Mercury label, a good thick vinyl that was in beautiful condition, and plus the album cover too. You gotta love it. And uh, uh, Pete uh, Rugolo, he's right here. Uh, he, uh, this is his album, and he was um, in much in demand for TV for TV theme music. Okay, and. He produced this album I had holding in my hands. It's called uh, Four Freshmen and Five Tr Trubones. Um, the Freshmen were a singing group, beautiful glee club vocals, just a astonishing. And uh, this album. It was produced by Pete. There he is, right there in the credits. And it, it is said that one of the uh, earliest albums Brian Wilson purchased was this album right here. 
because it sounds like the the vocally sound you know sound like the Beach Boys. Brian imitated that sound, you know vocal harmony sound, and you listen to it. Oh, this sounds like the Beach Boys except electric guitars that they were using uh, trombones. You know, um, beautiful, beautiful sounding album, lush ballads. Um, you know, very period looking. Look at them. Yes, I would feel safe my daughter to get, date one of them. <laughs> you know, they. <laughs> um, so, and this album here, it was an interesting find. This is a Japanese import. The condition. It's like perfect, beautiful, like almost new. It's in mono. It's a Japanese pressing. The album cover, the album, it even has the original sleeve with the inner uh, uh, plastic in it for, for the, uh, the vinyl not to get any uh, surface uh, marks. And it even has, oh, that's just a receipt. Uh, a lyric sheet that's printed in English and Japanese. I said this was a Japanese import. So this must have came out, been reissued in the maybe sometime in the 80s. I looked it up. I could not pinpoint an exact date. But it plays beautifully and very unique to have. Okay, how we do it? Seven minutes. Okay, we're going to fly through these. Now, this was a label that sure had its pulse on um, the what the uh, public wanted to hear. 25 number one is from, I don't know, 25 number one hits from 25 years, two records set. Uh, you can see all the uh, um, labels that was part of Motown. That's really cool. And it has all the familiar hits. Start, you know, the earlier days. Please, Mr. Please, the Marvelettes, uh, Baby Love, a lot of Supremes, and My Girl, the Temptations. Uh, and then it goes on later. Papa was a Rolling Stones, a Temptation. Um, What's going on, Marvin Gaye? Just my imagination, the Temptations, and a little bit later period. Um, got to give it up, Marvin Gaye. That was going in the seventies. Uh, three times a lady, and still the Commodores. Uh, give it to me, baby, Rick James, and endless love. So going into the eighties. So um, the vinyl to this is absolutely gorgeous. So if I want to hear all the old Motown hits on vinyl, uh, this is my go-to album. Another related um, album, Save the Children. And this came out in the early 70s. I don't remember it too much. Um, a Motown project. The original motion picture sound, so it was a motion picture, Save the Children. Something for y'all to Google. Yeah, I, I guess the project was to raise awareness. It has inside all pictures of children, of uh, children, um, uh, the plight of children, and um, some of the uh, social health issues they face, you know, good cause, and it has a lot of the live performances of Motown hits. Uh, Quincy Jones is on it, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Ramsey Lewis Trio, the, uh, the Curtis Mayfield, the OJs, the, the Push, uh, The Temptation, Jackie Vrindell, Nancy Wilson, Bill Weathers, uh, uh, even uh, jazz great Cannonball Adderley, uh, Jerry Butler, 
and they got it. The artwork is uh, it's hard to read the, the the print, so you know that's a shame. I have to look this up and, and print out the titles, uh, and it intermingles with uh, uh, Jesse Jackson, uh, read the Reverend. James Cleveland, the Reverend Je Jesse Jackson. Hey, even Sammy Davis Jr.'s on here. Um, with their speeches of what the project's about and, you know, saving the children and all that. Um, so, yeah, I, I brought it because it was only a couple bucks and the vinyl was in good condition. And I said, oh, th this is probably all right stuff I've heard before, but... It has a nice flow to it. The live performances really feel passionate and sincere. So I'm looking forward to listening to this further. Save the Children, the original motion uh, picture soundtrack. Good. A great artist we lost a few, I guess going on a few years now. Um, quite a shock, but this is a, uh, a, a 45... Um, Extended play, it's 45. Not up on my formats here. And oh, it's 45 RPM, it's cutting that speed. So that accounts for better speed, qual um, sound quality. And this is uh, Prince. This was a great find. Uh, extended edit extended remix dub version okay of uh, his uh, song um, I could never take the place of your man so it has that song the LP version the hot thing edit hot thing I think that's another song uh, hot thing extended so it has um, I could never take place of your man LP version hot thing edit hot thing extended remix and hot thing dub version pretty cool it sounds great it sounds great you know I probably could flip this for a uh, nice little chunk and change on uh, discography but I'm not going to do that I'm going to keep it and enjoy it and let my wife sell it that way when I croak. Okay, moving on. We're on 13 minutes. We've got to get rolling here. Uh, need a break Baker album? I got her big uh, breakthrough album. I think this is the follow up. And uh, um, let's see, what hit did it have? Uh, let me to love give me the best that I got uh, good enough uh, be, uh, beautiful I, I always liked her music it's, it's so soulful quiet storm very well produced she's such a um, great vocalist really can convey the emotions of the songs ah um, uh, yes yeah, this is a uh, Robin Trower uh, album twice uh, removed from yesterday and it did not have the album cover it just had the album and they put it in this generic sleeve and it's in perfect condition so if you could get a, uh, a playable Robin Trower album without even the cover you might as well get it this is a double LP live LP the fifth dimension live and I listened to it. I was shocked. I mean, they sound like Sly and the Family Stones. I think it w was uh, when they were in the studio. They were, you know, producing music for a broad audience of, you know, all races and um, um, all people. So they were going for the mass market. But when they had time to get on stage, you know, they can really get down, get funky. And so I'm glad I got this album. Um, came out, I don't know, 70, 71, you know, when they were very popular. I remember they were popular as a kid. A early uh, 80s uh, Neil Young album. 
uh, what is this called? Yeah, uh, Hawks and Doves. Kind of a, you know, Cold War uh, political statement album um, dealing with issues of, uh, um, of tensions between the superpowers and the, 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 the risk and uh, what devastation uh, can happen if things go wrong, you know, but uh, that was 1981, here we are, 2000, uh, I forgot the years, 18, okay, and yeah, so you can kind of look at those times and these times where there's still in a lot of danger, you know, I think it will always be a dangerous world. Um, Ozark Mountain Daredevils, and it has no time. Oh, okay. Uh, Men from Earth. Uh, so I, I like I like that album cover, you know, and so the you get the idea of uh, you know rural agriculture <laughs> um, out in the farmland. And I haven't heard this, but I, I bet it's really good. <laughs> I got one of their albums. Okay, uh, some live rock and roll. Humble Pie, rocking at the Fillmore. Uh, not in the best condition, vinyl wise. Uh, it needs a good cleaning, and it, I think it will play okay. But with rock albums, if it has some uh, surface noise, that's okay. Um, you might have heard this album, uh, or this artist, uh, Elton John, Empty Sky. And Empty Sky was Elton's first complete studio album. It was done on a shoestring budget um, with uh, players that uh, some of them played once with Elton. And, and um, went, continued with them a little bit longer, went away, and then Elton called some of them back uh, at the height of his popularity to form a new band. Uh, but heck, uh, Cabe Quayle, Q U A Y E, uh, is on here. He played with Elton's earlier records, including this one. Went away and came back uh, with Elton in 1976. Roger Pope, who has the same history of Cake Cable, um, is on here. Nigel Olson is on here on uh, Lady What's Tomorrow, and Nigel Olson came back later. I think he played a, a track or two on the uh, Bad Man Across the Water, but he was uh, uh, back. No, no, I'm thinking of Davy Johnson. Nigel Olson stayed with Elton uh, um, for all his albums, his classic albums, so he, he never really left. Um, Anyway, the history is, you know, released 1969, and it didn't gain a lot of notoriety. It uh, uh, didn't, you know, sell. And um, they knew they had a really special artist with Elton. Um, so the next album, the Elton John album, that was the... His, big major promotion, Elton's um, landmark um, performance at the Troubadour, his big American debut there, and um, it just bloomed, it blossomed steadily. Elton, you know, each album got better and better in the charts till he was king of the world, he was Captain Fantastic, but this album uh, empty Sky, so it was released, didn't do much, and Elton moved on to the next album, uh, the start of the launch of his really career. Um, this album, this is the European version. The American version got released in 1975, I think, late 75 or somewhere in 76, prior to the release of Captain Fantastic. By then, uh, Elton was on the top of the world, still is. <laughs> Um, he um, released his first greatest hits album and it remained on the top of the album charts for like 10 weeks. 
and so they released Empty Skies and it got a lot of interest sales including me so we got to hear his first album in its entirety um, but I'm happy to have the European pressing now okay don't know much about this band uh, it's a beautiful day and uh, the album is called Today They were, you know, in with the San Francisco, Jefferson Airplane, Grateful Dead type of music. And uh, they had one big radio hit. I can't think of it. But never really, really, really took off. Uh, they continued to release albums um, into the um, um, mid-70s, but uh, eventually disbanded. Okay. Um, this completes another shelving of vinyl records. Uh, I, I've been letting them r run long because uh, I have a lot on my mind. So I um, hope you've been watching the other uh, shelving videos and enjoy this one as well. Your comments are welcome. Y'all have a good day. Bye.